Okay, today we're here with Beth, and today we're gonna do a tour. We're gonna do a walk around of this Ram 3500 Pro Master Series van. So these are Beth's little puppies, and Beth is gonna explain what their names are and what she uses them for. All right, so this is Casey. He's four years old, Bernice Mountain Dog. And Gail is uh, not a vegetable. Uh, her name is spelled K-A-Y-L-E. She's seven years old. She's also a burner. And the little, little one uh, in the van, her name is Katie, sweet Katie. She's nine months old and uh, she's still learning. She's not ready for prime time yet, but she's pretty calm for a nine month old puppy. The two older dogs are registered therapy dogs with uh, Therapy Dogs International. And we go and visit people at hospitals and schools, hospice and uh, nursing homes. Kale weighs 90 pounds, Casey weighs 85, and Katie weighs almost 50. The nice thing about their size is that when we go to visit kids in the hospital, they can just lay their heads you know, right on the bed and they're not scary at all and the kids can pet them. These dogs are so gentle. These are really awesome puppies. Uh, really big, but really awesome. So I called the van the Burner B because Burner is a shorter name for a Bernese Mountain Dog and it's a B-class van. The name of it is a Travato, it's a Winnebago product. And uh, I got lucky enough that I got it as a used vehicle in 2017 and it's a 2017 van. So uh, the people who bought the van decided that it was too small for them and they brought it back and within two days I, I bought it. And, for, and so they left all of the uh, depreciation on the table and I got a, a van that had 400 miles on it and was used. Wow, that's pretty neat. How long have you been doing van life? Uh, I got the van two years ago in July, emptied my house, sold my house and uh, went to full time in May of 2018, which was when I retired from a teaching job at a university. What kind of led you to do actually doing van life? Um, I had a house that was very large, a uh, five bedroom. I raised, you know, three adopted kids in the house and I got tired of doing the maintenance. But mainly, if I sold my house and not had to make any payments anymore, I could retire about three years early. So my house that I gave up in order to have this van completely paid for and have no expenses other than what I incur. Okay, well, would you like to show us around on the outside? Uh, yeah, well, we can just start here. These are speakers on the outside and it has a porch light here so that you can use it at night. This is a little takeoff for the LP so you can hook it up directly, you know, if you want to grill outside. These are two little, um, this is like for a television. This is a TV to go out, so if you want to have a television out here, you can run it, you know, from the cable. And then these are just, you know, Your AC, outside AC, AC plugs. I'm going around, these vans don't come with a spare tire because they have so much underneath them. And so I bought this tire carrier from a company in, in California called Wilco. The reason why I like it is because it's a swing away. All I have to do is pull out this and then I can swing this open and have full access then to the back of the van. And um, so um, under here are just the, the black and the gray tank. Okay, uh, so you have release. both of them underneath there then. Yeah, this is the exhaust for the Cummings own, coming zone generator. And then this of course is the tank emptier. A really nice feature of this van is called a sanity flush. You take a hose, hook it up to the fresh water. And as you finish emptying the black tank, then you shoot the hose in here and it sprays all along the sides and just, just cleans it more. This is the exhaust for the heater and water heater. It's called the Truma combination and it works on both gas and electric. Here we have a tank fill and city fill. It has an 11 gallon tank and so I usually keep that about a third full. I kind of avoid filling it up just especially on a long trip because you're carrying a lot of weight. The black tank is about six gallons and also the gray tank is about seven so there's a gauge inside that tells how full the tank is and of course you don't want it to overfill. What kind of mileage did you get with it? Uh, when I went to Alaska I got about 19 miles a gallon was amazing. This is the little container for the stinky slinky. It just pulls right out and it's not super long, but I've never had any problem with being able to dump anywhere 
that I wanted to. This is the LP. There's an emergency shutoff here. And I found that out when I was in Washington in order to get on the ferries. There's an inside and an outside shutoff and you have to have both of the shutoffs turned off before they'll let you on the ferry. Well, I bet that was exciting though. Yeah, uh, this is the plug-in for 30 amp. There are things they call dog bones that convert. So if I go into a campground that has a 50 amp, then you know, you use the dog bone and sure, step so it down. Convert it, yeah. So, yeah. This is the drain where if you're going to winterize, you uh, drain those. That's just a gravity drain that gets as much water out as possible. What I found is I need to close them up again, drive around a little bit, and then open up again. The main thing is to know how to get it winterized with the pink stuff and then clean it out, not risking the little tubes that they call pipes. <laughs> you know. This is where the gas goes in, pretty simple. In terms of the engine, do you want me to talk about the engine? <laughs> sure, go right I can't, yeah. <laughs> because I <laughs> know how to is? open the engine compartment, but that's all. <laughs> that, do you know what size it is? It's a V6. So moving up here, there's a radio antenna and a King television antenna. The running lights run all the time. I usually keep the headlights on too for extra safety and visibility. I have a satellite on the back, but I've never used it. I just bring in over the air, and depending on where you're at, it can be two channels or it can be 35. I'll show you one other little thing which is kind of unusual. There's a spot here where there's a big eye hook that comes out about this far and that's how you tow it. It's got one in the back as well. I set it up like I was camping because I have the, the seats turned around. Well these are the steps. Are those steps an automatic step? Yeah you can use this to bring them in or out. Just a little switch. Uh, with big dogs and a puppy with a big butt I found I had to make a little modification and I'll show you that now. Actually a soap dish that's upside down and I just used a little cable tie thing to to hook both of them. This is the main battery. I didn't want them to shut off the main batteries. What a great idea for a little cage. It helps keep all your buttons protected. Right. Start with the seating. It's kind of built for two people. This is my desk area. It's got a little thing here like this. This comes out. It makes it really nice. Um, and so I can sit here, use my computer. Uh, if somebody else is in the van and we're eating together or something, you know, then I just pull that out and they have a little base as well. Especially with the swivel seats on there. Yeah, and of course the van won't start unless both seats are in the front Forward position. position. Yeah, because of the airbags and the safety. Uh, this is the overhead compartment, which is, you know, kind of a catch-all. We got dog leashes and umbrellas and dog food. This is a really simple blackout curtain that I bought at Walmart. I two pieces of it. I just unhook it, slide it across. Up at the top here, I have these window coverings for the front and both sides. It really helps a lot, but for the most part, if I'm stopping at night and I just want to have some privacy, I pull these and I don't have to do any of the rest of that. It gives me really nice privacy. Now, is that just a regular bar? Oh no, I put this up with command hooks and it's just a expandable shower curtain. Pretty simple and you know, so far the police have not stopped me. Um, I didn't even hem it when I cut it off. But so far, you know, the hemming police have not come, so I'm, I'm good. I think. You know, some people couldn't stand that, I know, but I wouldn't have it. And then this is for dogs. Bought these for um, protection of the upholstery. It's the kind of thing you'd use for a baby or a little kid, and they're waterproof. When it's raining, you know, I just spread these out here, and then when they jump up, then their feet don't get the bedding wet. And then this is the uh, the cover for the slider. I had this rug in my house. It's called a water hog and it's there for the same reason. It just absorbs the water. So if the dogs are the slightest bit wet on their feet, then it doesn't do anything to the van. It just dries up. So, you know, it's helpful. Uh, this, it just shows you how much storage you can get. This is just a little container. That's my little inverter. Do you use that inverter? You know, I do. I've got a little space right here to plug it in and I've got a really small crock pot. So when I'm driving, I plug it in, the inverter runs the crock pot and cooks my dinner for me. It works really well. The only problem is I usually stop at four o'clock because I can't stand it anymore. It smells too good. <laughs> you know, I have to stop and eat. <laughs> so yeah, here's another OBNet, you know, kind of for all things dog. Not everybody would have all that stuff, but I keep coupler for their leashes and help train the puppy and you know things like that so all right so the kitchen has a microwave that is combination so you can bake heck i never baked at home so i don't know why i would bake now <laughs> and this is you know another one of those little drawers that kind of holds everything 
Uh, now I'm back behind here. There's a lot of USB things, and this is my charger, of course, for my phone, but this goes with this little fan. I don't know if I could live without these little USB fans because they, they also have a timer on them, so you can set them up to run for a certain amount of time. This runs on the 12 volt, so it doesn't hardly take anything. And then this is uh, internal light, so, and then it's got a AC plug too. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but if you look down here, it's a guttered guard that you get at a home store so nothing can fall between here. I love your saying there. Yeah, that's my life verse. That is so beautiful. This has a glass protector here because when you're cooking you wouldn't want these cabinets to catch on fire or get too hot. And my only comment about that is I haven't been able to figure out any way to get back in underneath here to clean it and it's just completely dusty and it drives me you know kind of crazy but only occasionally this just works like a regular you know you turn on the lp it's just a two burner stove you just have to push this in turn it on and click it and, and it holds on um i can show you my little system for making coffee kind of cool so this is a little collapsible heat kettle and you just warm up the water and then this is called my joe pretty popular you put a little herring cup in there fits right in there and then this goes on top you set this here you will get the water hot and then you put this on here and once it's sealed it pushes the water through like a french press kind of and then you just lift it off uh this is the sink i usually put this on here and just keep it from accidentally getting bumped it has to do with dogs again you know pushing against it accidentally now i noticed you have a collapsible bucket in there i just do that so that nothing goes down in there i found that this collapsible works really well in there. These are called anything keepers. I use it for medications over here on this side. I also use it for just uh, lightweight silverware. And they just took on, on both sides. They've held on pretty well for a couple years now. It just gives you a little bit of drop down storage. Where did you find these at? Amazon. It's called the anything keeper. This isn't very expensive. It's just a refrigerator monitor and it really helps a lot. It gives you the temperature of the freezer and the temperature of the refrigerator. And so you can tell if something starts to go wrong. This is the refrigerator. This is a Nova Cool. I like it really well. It basically runs on DC. It runs on the battery and the coach battery. You can see there's not a lot of space in here, but it's amazing how deep it is. And this is the little sensor. And this also helps a lot. It just runs on a D battery and it's just a little fan so that the air gets pushed down. And then the sensor for that is over there. So, um, I have a lot of safety features, of course. This is for the carbon monoxide. And this is the smoke detector. Most of the time when I'm cooking, this is very, very sensitive, so I open up this cupboard. <laughs> a lot of people usually pull the batteries before they cook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I assume this is rear king antenna. Yeah, what you do is there's a little light here that flips on, and then you physically turn it until you get the most that you can. This is a little attenuator that helps you bring it in a little bit more. Uh, of course, the Max Air Van. How do you like that one? It is so it's, quiet. Yeah, it's very quiet. It's got the ability to change the direction. So if it's cooler outside, you can blow the cooler air in. Of course, you can increase the speed here this is an automatic open and close but you can also manually open or close it if you need to this button right here when i push it it turns green and it will automatically turn the fan on if it's 75 degrees or warmer in here so i could not have to worry so much about my dogs <laughs> if they're in here and i'm not so there is a table that fits down here and it spans the whole length it's got receivers like this. I decided not to use the whole tabletop because I just didn't need it with the chairs that we have up in the front. Oh, I just got some scrap wood. It's not as nice as what other people would probably do it, but I just put some light coat varnish on it. But you say that's like for when your grandson comes? Yeah, or? he spends the night every Friday night and he needs a table because the television is right here. It pulls out, so he watches TV and has this, but then if he needs a little bit more room, you know, like at night, then we just turn it around. Speaking of my grandson, he considers himself to be in charge of all of these. Here's the bedroom light. Here's the kitchen light. This is the Truma control panel. And so he'll click this. I'm going to set it over here to the temperature. Right now it's off. So it's just got a thermostat here. Turn it up to, you know, 66. When anyone who's lying here, like early in the morning or something, if it's a little bit chilly, you can just reach up and change the temperature. This also controls the water heater then. So it can either be on eco or hot or boost, which takes it up to boiling, like if you're trying to sanitize the, the Truma system. This is a heating panel 
pad on the tanks. So you turn this on and the uh, tanks are heated. I mean, it's not gonna do anything at minus 20, you know, but, <laughs> but it's gonna preserve. Okay, so this is the LP valve that has to be on. Just a little light here, you know, for reading light. This is turn the water pump on. This gives you your tank levels. So right now it shows I'm two thirds on the fresh water and full of LP gas. This tells the battery level right here what the chassis battery and the house battery. And this is showing up here. This is the ZAMP solar that shows 13.0. That shows that the sun is putting energy into the system. With the solar charge controller, how many watts do you have of solar on your roof? I have 260, 100 panel, and then 280s. And that has been just fine. What kind of batteries do you have in here? They're AGM. They're AGM. Yeah. So the then if I, if I need to charge up the batteries, if I don't have a plug-in and it's a rainy day, you know, then I can start the generator. I can do that right here. I push stop for a couple of times. I don't usually need to do this, but you, you can prime it that way. And then just push start and the generator. So, you know, it's a little noisy. I wouldn't I wouldn't run it in a campground. This air conditioner here pulls too many amps. It won't run on the coach batteries because it takes too much. And so if I have to run the, like for example, if it's 85 degrees and I have to go to a store, I'll park at the end of the parking lot and turn on the generator, turn on this air conditioner and dogs are fine. I don't have to worry about them. This pulls down, so then it'll swing out and around. It also swings out, so if you want to sit outside and watch it, you can. This is a Jensen radio, and it also is a DVD player here. We'll get you a full surround connected system. Yeah. yeah. Now, I assume that the bed actually will go into one long bed or one big bed if you wanted yeah. it to, right? That's what the table is for. I was just going to show this. This is mainly mechanical. Down and underneath here is the Truma. This is the water pump. The easiest thing that I know about is this little thing comes out. When it comes to winterize, you turn a couple of valves to keep the, the pink stuff from going into the Truma heater. And then you just unscrew this, hook it into your pink gallon, turn on the water pump and it, it siphons right it up. That makes it easy to winterize. And you can see this tube here. Um, this is where we talked about that stinky slinky is. That's it right there. Okay. If you want to go a little bit further into the fuses right here. This is just regular fuses for the AC refrigerator. It's all labeled here. It's really nice. And then these, those are all your fuses. The nice thing is that it has a little light attached to it. So in time a fuse goes out, then you'll get a red thing. will show you that the fuse is out. So that concludes what I know about the mechanics. <laughs> the other thing I was going to show you is the basement. This is a miscellaneous storage. <laughs> and so this is most of the time, this is where the, the big bags of dog food go. Okay, so now we're going to check out the back of the van in the garage. Okay, this is just a blank wall when I got it. And uh, I got a, a couple of things that were really helpful. For one thing, this is just a container, but it's, uh, it's the right size that it fits here. The other thing I wanted to show you, this is my grill. It fits exactly in there. It's a gas grill called an Elevate grill. And the reason that's a little heavier is because right inside here is where the, the green LP is stored. It's really a neat deal. You just turn this down, that, and those become the legs. And you take this, screw it in there, you know, and you've got your LP. That's called the Elevate. And then, um, you know, in here is just storage. You know, it's got the stuff for the spare tire and things like that. And this is a sprayer which I love because I can wash off the dog's feet if they get dirty. Sure. Switch that... here that runs with the water pump so I can just spray it off. Yeah. Some people use it for a shower if they want to, you know, wash off their feet. Right along here we've got a light. You know, this will turn on water pump. This is a uh, 12 volt plug-in. So this is what I was talking about, the dog bones. A lot of people have seen these. This one is smaller. It'll go from the 20 amp to 30. So I can plug into a regular household and then plug into my van. These are called OB nets. It's just very flexible. I can wind up the hose here and stuff them in there. This is my black hose. This is my white hose. And I use the black for the Santa flush. This had screws in it before and I thought it was kind of a big waste of space in here. So I started storing some things in there. You know, this is the filter that I use when I fill up the water tank. Just some extra little things. I just stuck it on with Velcro so I could pull it on and off easier. Okay, so I'll step up here now. So here we are in the bathroom. I'm just going to tell you that not everybody probably would do this, but I spent time in Costa Rica and her plumbing doesn't allow toilet tissue to go down there. So also, uh, I just decided to use the same system. I have this little container here. I empty it every day and that way I never have to worry about anything getting stuck or building up in my black tank and it works just fine. This is the toilet, it's just your standard everyday toilet. So um, the flushing mechanism is right here with your foot. And so you just, there we go. 
Okay, so if you push it just a little ways, the valve kind of comes out and it'll fill up. And then when you push it all the way, then it'll go back in there. Now this is for cleaning, and it really works well. If you push this with your foot, then this can spray, you use this to spray around. Now this is the shower, and what you do is you can shut this like this, and then there is a shower curtain that goes around and hooks on these snaps. And so then you can either hand hold the shower or you can turn it on. So it's a wet bath. The shower curtain covers everything. Now this is the pull down sink. So it works the same way. It's just a regular faucet on and off. And then, then when you're ready to fold it back up, then the water just goes down the drain. Drain goes uh, right into the black tank. And then this is the medicine cabinet. So I put in some little containers so that it'll be easier to keep the stuff. Here it has a small fan. That's nice, especially uh, when taking a shower. Okay, so then in here I have, uh, well, this is just kind of like a closet, and I have a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> so, But I bought this little thing from the container store, so it enables you to, you know, be a little bit more organized. Thank you, Beth, so much for taking your time to do this van tour. I really appreciate it.